guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be going over uh, the front end suspension braking system and then the rear end axles as well as suspension and A-arms. So I'm going to start by explaining um, kind of the front wheel setup. I have the brakes, uh, the spindle as well as the steering. Uh, tie rod setup um, and the suspension. So first we're going to start off by jacking up the front end. Okay, so now that that's up, uh, we can use our impact wrench to take off the front wheel. Okay, so now that the front wheel's off, uh, we've exposed the hub as well as the brake caliper. Uh, again, these are off of a 150cc, I believe, go-kart. Um, they happen to fit perfectly on here. Um, they slide right over your existing um, 5 8 inch front spindle here. I added a 5 8 inch tubing um, over the intersection here because the inside bearing is slightly larger uh, than the outside. And then just another piece on the end. And then I drilled a hole in the end of the spindle and tapped it for 5 16 inch bolt. I'd like that to be bigger, but because of the size of the spindle, like that wasn't really an option. Uh, as far as mounting the caliper here, uh, that's mounted using 5 16 inch bolts going through quarter inch angle iron. Um, I cut the angle iron uh, into a U shaped bracket to fit the caliper, uh, drilled holes in it, and then welded two quarter inch thick um, steel plates to the spindle itself and then welded the angle iron on top of that to space it out properly. Now this happens to fit perfectly uh, inside my eight inch rims for the front, uh, front wheels. Um, some people have had issues with that but I was lucky enough to get away with it. There you can see a better view of the hubs. Um, you can see how they're mounted on the 5 8 inch um, spindles with the 5 8 inch tubing spacers. Um, I actually replaced the studs here on the, the hubs to 3 8 inch bolts uh, for a number of reasons, but mainly the uh, ones that came with it, I couldn't quite find a, a lug nut to fit on there. I'm not really sure why. Uh, the caliper, as you can see, is mounted to that angle iron there, and then the two spacers connecting it directly to the spindle so that when you turn the steering wheel, everything moves as one solid unit. The tie rod here, um, standard tie rod that came with the um, spider box go-kart rack and pinion setup. I have um, a used one that I was able to clean up and it worked perfectly fine. Uh, the boots are not perfect, they have a couple cracks in them, but that's no big deal. Um, I actually, you can see that there's some rust here. I had to do an extension to these uh, because I had the longer A-arms in the front. Um, so I just cut out a piece and welded in some 5 8 inch rod. Um, actually addressing the, the rust issue over the entire go-kart. For the longest time I've been just changing things constantly. Really never uh, a set goal in mind. So I always tend to change things and if I were to paint it I would constantly be grinding it away and redoing it. So I don't really see a point to paint it yet. Uh, I'll just be able to take a flat disc and get rid of the rust when it, when it does come time to paint it. Uh, moving forward to the steering system. Like I mentioned, fighter box, rack and pinion, uh, with your standard knuckles there, uh, going up to the top one. And then here we can see, I actually cut off the splines that originally came with the shaft that ended here. I did the same thing, took 5 8 inch bar and uh, welded it in between here to lengthen it because uh, at one point I actually cut this go-kart in half and added 6 inches to the overall length because I grew. So that had to be moved farther back. The steering wheel, flat bottom steering wheel, I believe it's 11 inches. That's perfect for what I'm doing. Moving farther up, the spindle bracket here is actually welded to a piece of one inch square tubing uh, with two holes drilled in it for the pivot points for the front uh, lower A arm and upper control arm here. Um, the 
lower A arm is also made out of one inch square tubing, uh, bent and shaped and then welded uh, with two steel plates with holes uh, drilled in them to mount the spindle bracket. Um, also welded on the bottom A arm is the shock mounting tabs for the lower end there. Uh, just 3 8 inch holes drilled in there. Connecting all to the center uh, mainframe of the go-kart is two, uh, I'd say seven or eight inch long, uh, five eighths inch bolts. Very large, but definitely strong enough. Uh, I just used more of that five eighths inch uh, tubing as the pivot point and then welded it directly to the Aon. The same goes for the top here. Uh, we're just, it's just missing the outer arm here. Uh, I didn't really do that for a specific reason. I knew that the lower one was definitely strong enough. Um, the top adding even more strength, so I figured it didn't need the outside. It also allowed more room for the suspension uh, in there, and that also uses that same 5 8 inch uh, pivot point. Okay, moving back to the rear here, we're going to go ahead and take this wheel off so you can see a closer look at the wheel bearing mounts and how I built this. Here you can see a closer look at the end of the rear axle here. You can see that it's just a 3 8 inch um, extended nut there welded onto the end, uh, which essentially just allows me to th uh, thread a bolt in there and tighten on the wheel so it doesn't slide off. Here you have two more 1 inch bearings, which are bolted directly onto a homemade uh, bearing hanger, I guess you could call it. Uh, it's just made out of, I guess that's probably a quarter inch uh, steel plate with tabs for the upper A-arm there and then tabs for the lower A-arm as well. Uh, this has always worked really well for me. Uh, the only issue I have is that occasionally when you tighten that down it actually yanks the axle um, away from this lower uh, universal CV axle joint. Uh, so that can cause some issues every once in a while. I just have to tap it back in with a hammer. Uh, they surprisingly put these really tiny set screws on there that don't do much against that one inch axle. Okay, now once the rear tire's off, I'm gonna explain um, how my universal joint system works. So to better do that, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the rear shock here. You can take 14 millimeter wrench, 14 millimeter impact socket. Uh, now you can see how this system works. It's essentially a dual A-arm setup, top and bottom, and then the universal joint axle slides in and out of the upper universal joint there to allow axle movement with suspension flex. You can see how it works. We'll go ahead, put that back together. Okay, so that's pretty much all I have for uh, this episode. Next episode, I'm going to be in depth describing the jack shaft setup with the bearings and how I do my adjustments to chain tensioning. Thank you very much. Uh, remember to subscribe. Uh, share this channel with anyone that you know that might be good with go karts or like, you know, car related things. I really appreciate any support you give to this channel. Thank you.